Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Field. And tonight is an interesting episode uh, on a new promotion that I was given to Senior Learning and Development Specialist. Not exactly sure what that means. I'm sure I'll find it out as I go. But I figured I'd take this time to kind of explain to you this position and why I've taken it, because I, I may not get the chance to do it again. Truth be told, we've got so many good guests and topics coming up that uh, I just don't know if we'll have the time to slot it in. Uh, and while it was the beginning of the year and things were kind of slow, I figured I would take uh, my time to kind of explain this new position still within academia uh, and, and what it exactly means. I had originally been core faculty uh, at the university for over three years now after adjuncting and doing some uh, contributing faculty work for about a year. I loved it. I loved teaching. Uh, I loved my job. I loved educating. However, there was a conversation that I had with my program director at one point, and it was just basically about you know, my future and my plans and what, what I was trying to accomplish, goals and whatnot. It definitely involves some leadership. There's some studies that I've been working on with some people regarding leadership, and, and that's definitely a topic that interests me. He asked me if I was ever interested in becoming a program director, and I said, truthfully, I don't think that's in the cards for me. And, and it wasn't a knock on on him or the position or the university or anything like that. I just didn't really think that it was something that I ever wanted to do. And it wasn't about leadership and the position. It was that program director for a physical therapy program has a lot of administrative tasks and things that have to be done that are currently up against a lot of barriers and a lot of pushback and a lot of resistance. I said, if I was ever going to be a program director, it would probably be more in an EDD or an educational doctor program more than a DPT program. Just because I love the idea of teaching and learning and learning how to teach and teaching to how to, how to learn. So my EDD has actually led me down a path where I have the opportunity to utilize my EDD more. And, and again, I love physical therapy. It's been a great career for me. I love teaching. I love learning. But overall, I am a little limited at times with the DPT curriculum and what I can and can't teach and how I can teach it. A lot of times because of the NPTE exam, our limitations there and, and the fact that we have to get our students ready to take and pass their, their NPTE exam. Uh, we have to get them ready to go out on clinical rotations and perform to the best of their ability so they can become safe practicing clinicians when they graduate. It was one of those things where I just felt like my skills weren't being completely utilized the way that I had imagined they would be within the world of academia. I feel like if I were to go back and do it all over again, I definitely would have gotten into education much, much sooner. It, it was never really something I considered. My dad had been a, a English teacher for over 30 years and I just didn't see myself going that path. But in hindsight, really, I was, I think I was meant to do it. 
I, I feel like something drew me to this path. And I think a lot of it is just communication, uh, my ability to communicate. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with my my struggles with teaching and learning or learning first, then teaching early on in my career. I think once I entered the EDD program and I really learned how to learn, that made all the difference for me. That really kind of started my mind going in and in, in the right place and really kind of looking into, you know, the possibilities of how I could help people learn better because I, I knew I wasn't a very good learner. You know, for me, that was important. And now that I've kind of finished teaching full-time for now within the DPT program. I will still be teaching adjunct. I'll be teaching the business and administration course uh, for our university, for our flex program still. Um, and then whatever other course they might need me to teach, I'll probably teach one course per trimester moving forward. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever leave uh, the boat of academia and teaching, so to speak. I'd like to keep one foot in the boat. I feel like this new position of senior learning and development specialist is something that I can actually utilize my EDD and my educational doctorate more because the takeaway from this whole promotion, this whole new job switch is I want to help more people learn how to teach better and how to learn better. And this job is is exactly cut out for that. So that being said, let's dive into what exactly a senior learning and development specialist is and what they do. I think the biggest thing is that I now get to help other professors learn how to teach better. That's that's one of the first points that, that I get to do. If we look at that, our university has physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, nurse practitioner, I think, nursing, PA. We have we have a bunch of different healthcare programs, right? For me, I get to help all those professors and all those faculty members learn how to teach better. And that's pretty important for me because, uh, you know, again, I struggled throughout grad school. And I think a lot of it was just I was a rote memorizer, right? Which we know is not learning. You know, it's it's just straight memorization, which doesn't get you very far. Once I realized that, oh, that's not teaching and learning, you know, I think that that really set my mind uh, free and, and really got it going in the right direction for like, oh, here's all the things that you can do to help yourself learn better. You know, for me, that that really just helped me get over that hump of these are the things that help you learn and help make it stick. You know, I want to help other professors learn how to teach to those points so that they can help their students learn uh, and, and they can help, you know, make things stick for their students. If we really look at the, the big takeaway for me, just getting the opportunity to help others teach better and become the best version of themselves with regards to, to teaching. That was the first step that kind of pushed me in that direction for uh, the new position. The next thing that I kind of get to do is I get to help students learn better, which again, for me is super important because I wasn't a very good learner. I did not learn uh, very easily. I didn't learn very well. Um, until I got through an EDD program, which is insane to me. But once I did, again, that really piqued my interest and curiosity in education. And I think that was that was really big. So the fact that I now get to utilize my skills to help students learn as well, I hope that I can show them the different methods and ways they can use to learn better and make it stick like we talked about. Because Again, for me, it was just memorization and memorization and rereading and rereading and rehighlighting and rehighlighting and like taking notes over and over and over again. And none of that worked. Um, it just didn't. So the hope is to at least introduce the students to different methods, techniques, and ways uh, that they can learn. Finally, I have a lot of, we'll call it freedom, uh, intellectual freedom. I have a, a good amount of creative freedom to meet goals and initiatives that the university has put forth 
And now for a quick shout out to our newest sponsor, Varela Financial. If you're a physical therapist and you have student loan debt, you got to talk to these guys. What makes them unique is that they view financial planning like running hurdles on a track. And for PTs, the first hurdle many of us run into is student loan debt. Varela Financial will help you get over that hurdle. They not only take the time to explain to you which plans you individually qualify for and how those plans work, but they also take the time to show you what your individual case looks like mapped out within each option. So if you're looking for help on your student loan debt or any area of personal finances, we recommend working with them. I use Varela Financial personally, and they were able to help me lower my student loan repayment from about $1,800 a month down to about $135 per month simply by finding the right repayment plan that best fit me, my family, and our life goals. You can check them out at varelafinancial.com. Link is in the show notes if you need it for reference, and tell them the HET podcast crew sent you. And now, back to the show. Utilizing some of my skill sets, like my love and interest in podcasting. Um, the university doesn't have a podcast currently. Uh, we're going to try to get one up and running here in the near future because uh, we want to highlight and spotlight a lot of the great things that the faculty members and the students are doing here on campuses. And we want to make sure that the world sees that, uh, you know, hey, we're, we're doing some pretty amazing things here. Why don't you come learn with us? Or why don't you come teach with us? Or, you know, whatever it may be. It's it's just a really great opportunity to to be around some really, really smart folks doing really amazing things. From research to teaching to scholarships and, and you know, amazing clinical rotations and presentations and, and posters. And uh, it's just been amazing to see the people that I get to work with. I'm, I'm truly blessed. And so we're, we're trying to highlight and spotlight some of them. So what better way to do that than a vlogcast and a podcast, just like I've done uh, several times over at this point in my life. So again, it, it, I don't know that I would get to do a lot of that stuff within the DPT program moving forward. I, 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 could I implement a lot of the stuff that I teach? Yeah, I could I could use it on my own to to hopefully help my students learn better. But um, this allows me to kind of have a, a bigger impact, I think, both within the student community and within the professor community uh, and the faculty world. So the cool thing about senior learning and development specialist is that I learned that it is actually not specific to academia. It is a job title that is found in some large corporations, um, especially ones revolving around online education. But any corporation that has any aspect of education within it, whether it be employee training or, you know, safety training or uh, client training or whatever it may be. If there's education and training to be done, a lot of companies have a senior learning and development specialist within them because they need somebody who gets education, how to best teach stuff and how to, again, make that stuff stick so that the people that they're trying to teach and educate get the important information and take it and process it and can then turn it around and utilize it for either their job or safety issues or whatever it may be. So I thought that was really neat, too, to learn that, uh, you know, this this position of senior learning and development specialist is not uh, just an academic thing. You know, companies like Microsoft, uh, there was an educational startup in Austin that that uh, was looking for one. Uh, and these are just, you know, positions that get sent to my inbox through uh, LinkedIn uh, or Indeed just because I have this title now. And so they, they send me uh, similar jobs. So it's just really cool to see that, you know, people who truly value lifelong learning and who need somebody who loves lifelong learning and likes to geek out about it, uh, it's nice to see that they can, you know, take this position and turn it into it and leverage it into something cool that may be outside of academia. So if you know how to teach something well, if you know how to get you know, your points across well and get them to stick, you know how to co communicate and you're a master communicator senior learning and development specialist would be a great position for you. Uh, not all universities will have one. Obviously, it's going to be different for every university, but look into it. Just see if your university even has something like that, if that's something that may interest you. For me, it falls under the teaching, learning, and in innovation department, which is kind of cool because, again, all things I love. 
and I've got some really great deans right over me that are, are you know, kind of helping pave the way for the future of, of our goals and our initiatives for the university. So uh, it's really great to learn from them and, and to work, you know, under them and with them on projects. And I'm just super excited for what the future holds and, and what this position allows me to do. Um, plus, I, I have a lot of flexibility, just like I did with uh, teaching within the Flex program. Um, but uh, that also uh, needed me to come in on weekends on occasion to, to teach labs. And uh, I love that. I love teaching labs. But it's also nice to have my weekends back. Uh, so that uh, I can do things with the family, like, uh, you know, coaching basketball or Little League or, you know, going to tournaments and, you know, taking family trips and vacations. Um, it's really nice to to kind of get my weekends back. And I think that kind of had a little bit to do with it as well. But yeah, the flexibility of this position, uh, you know, it's mostly a remote position. Uh, I'm on campus a couple of days a week trying to help spread the good word of, of all things education and, and how to uh, teach and learn better and, and reflect and become the best version of yourself with regards to your your profession and your, your faculty position. So overall, like I said, I'm super excited about it. If it's something that sounds interesting to you, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Obviously, I'm I'm always readily available. I hope that this episode kind of opened your eyes to some of the the neat and and different positions that are available. One of the things that was kind of interesting to me was I went from a faculty position, full time faculty and a, and a core faculty member, to now this this new position is a staff position. And so it was interesting because I do end up losing my faculty credential, so to speak. Like I I was a, an assistant professor. Uh, I had I continued on, we don't have a tenure, but we have a like a, I guess you can call it a, an improvement track or a, a promotion track, so to speak. So you would go every five years or so you're up for promotion, you would go from like assistant professor to associate professor to full professor. And then the only thing above that would be program director. Again, I didn't see that as my path. I didn't see it as, uh, you know, my end, end all be all. So the, the faculty credential part of it wasn't um, necessarily important to me. I'm still going to do all the things that I would as a full faculty member. I'm still going to do research. Uh, it's just going to be about stuff that I'm interested in and that may not be specifically physical therapy re related, but will be education related and education in physical therapy program related. Definitely some business education uh, research. Some leadership research, like I said, another topic I'm really into. The, there's still going to be a lot of similarities to what I was doing. Uh, it's just going to be uh, funneled in a different way. Um, I don't think it's going to change my overall big picture goals and, and how I plan to make an impact on the world of, of physical therapy and education. The hope is that uh, I can keep growing and expanding and pushing myself beyond my boundaries and limits so that eventually... Uh, you know, I can, I can reach my overall goals and my North star. So again, I hope this was an interesting episode for you. I hope it kind of shed some light on some cool uh, positions that are out there in the world of academia. Uh, and if I can answer any questions, like I said, please feel free to reach out to me at PT educator on any of the socials, or you can shoot me an email. Um, you can actually email the podcast, HET podcast at gmail.com. Hope this finds you all doing well and that you have a happy and healthy new year and we will see you on the next one. Hello, everybody. Dr. F. Scott Field here, and we don't do this nearly enough. Uh, I wanted to thank you as an audience for being here, for listening to the shows. Without you guys, we wouldn't have anybody to geek out with uh, over education and learning and teaching and educating. So thank you for, for being here, for being you know faithful listeners over the years. Uh, also, if possible, we'd love to ask a favor. We don't do this often, but if you could leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast, we would greatly appreciate it. It helps boost our rankings and our algorithm and really just helps get this message out to more people out there in healthcare education who, who may need you know some of the episodes and the experts that we interview. So if you could, like I said, leave a rating and review, we would greatly appreciate it, and we will see you on the next show.